All right, so now let's take everything that we've learned in this series and put it all together in a script. I'm inside of create underscore resource underscore group inside of the create resource group directory in our GitHub repo. As always, the link will be in the description. Now, what we're gonna do with this script is create a resource group in Azure. You will need an Azure account, but you can sign up for a free one. Again, there will be a link in the description. If you don't wanna sign up for an Azure account, totally fine. Uh, I'll still step through the script uh, function by function so you understand everything that's going on here. But I would recommend to sign up for, maybe not an Azure account, but any cloud platform account. Uh, using Bash is an essential skill set when it comes to any technical role in cloud computing. And many, many CLIs that you're using in the cloud, think about, like Terraform, Docker, Kubernetes, the Azure CLI, the AWS CLI, the GCP CLI, any CLI is gonna have functionality that integrates well with Bash. So why not give it a try with this script here? We're gonna create a resource group, which is sort of like a folder. Every single application and service that you deploy to Azure needs to live inside of a resource group, but it doesn't cost anything. I wanted to make sure the example that I have here doesn't cost you a penny. Uh, you can erase, delete the resource group later on if you'd like, but it's not going to accumulate any price for you. So uh, I thought that was important. Okay, so uh, inside of the script, I'm going to start all the way down because remember at the top is the definitions for our functions. And we have one, we're calling setup, then we're calling check region, then we're calling check resource group, create resource group, and list resource groups. Remember that the definitions for our functions need to be provided in our script before we actually call our functions. So if this were to be at the top, we would get errors. Let's scroll to the top and start with our first function. We're gonna do a setup, which is going to install the Azure CLI and then log into our uh, Azure account. So make sure you have that set up beforehand. Next, we have a function called print out regions, which is going to print out five recommended regions here. Remember in our variables video, we mentioned that if you want to assign the value of our variable to be the output of some command, you have to put it inside of a dollar sign parentheses, which we have here. Let's scroll over here and we have a pipe functionality as well. We want the output of what's on the left. So in this case, the Azure CLI output to then be sent over to the head command and only grab the first five lines. Uh, in this case, the Azure CLI command here is going to list the locations that are available to my account. And we only want the top five ones, so that's why we're using the head command here. Additionally, I am using the dash dash query option in the Azure CLI, but this is functionality specific to the Azure CLI and not necessary to bash. Uh, so I won't really go into the weeds of this, but if you look up dash dash query with the Azure CLI, you'll better understand what this is doing here. Awesome. Now we've got a for loop. So we're going to say for i in regions array. Again, we're assigning the output here and we're getting five values returned. So we're going to iterate over these five values, print them out to screen echo i, which becomes the value of each uh, element in our array as we move toward through the loop, awesome. Then we have select a region, uh, which is called check region function. Uh, we have a variable here that has a local scope. Remember that local locally scoped variables only exist within the function, they will not exist outside. So we're saying local region exists equals false. Uh, while region exists equals false. So while false equals false, which is true, uh, do what's inside of here. Now you can see we're getting a bit more involved. Keep in mind that the spacing between your, like the lines, like you can't have this all on one line. I mean, you could, but it wouldn't look really nice. Uh, some people use tabs, some people use spaces, some people use two spaces, three spaces, four spaces. It is really up to you. The best practice recommendation really only is to be consistent with it. In my case, I'm using tabs because it's pretty easy to just hit the tab button for me. So we've seen the while the loop before, but now we're calling a function. So you're saying, hey, Gwen, we're inside the check region function and we're calling the print out regions functions. Yes, you can call functions within functions. So in this case, we're calling print out regions. We're going to get our five regions printed at the screen. And that is so the user can pick a region and know which options they have available to them. So then we're asking for input. We're prompting to enter your region and assigning that value to selected regions. We are then going to a for loop. 
And then for each element of the region's array, we're going to assign it to J. Remember I mentioned in the for video or in the loop video that you can assign any character here, but it's best practice to start with I, or sometimes you can use J. Uh, I put J in here just as an example. So for each element, we're going to do this. We're going to compare the selected region, which is the input that the user provides to us, to the value that is at J. So that's going to be one of the each of the five regions that's available to us. So if this the selected region equals that value, then we're going to say, OK, this region does exist. And we're going to echo region exists. And then we're going to break out of this. So we saw the break in the loop video as well. But in this case, we actually have two loops going on, right? We have the for loop, and then we have the while loop. The break will only break out of the loop that it's inside. So it's only going to break out of the for loop. But since the condition here is region exists equals false, and we're setting it here to true, well, the next iteration that it goes, once breaking out of the for loop, it's going to say region exists equals true. Does true equal false? False. So the while loop will stop. Remember, the while loop will only continue iterating if the condition is true. If we wanted to check a condition is false, we would use until, but we're not using until then. All right, awesome. Next, we're going to check if a resource group already exists, just to make sure the user isn't creating a group uh, that exists already, and we can avoid any errors that come with that. So we're using while true do. Uh, we're going to read an input providing a prompt enter name for your resource group and saving that value to resource group. Finally, we have an if statement here, and we're going to check for this uh, truth test here, which is az group exists, which is functionality for the Azure CLI. And pretty much we're asking, hey, Azure, does a resource group with the name resource group, which is the value passed into the variable resource group from the user input, equal true? So if it does, it exists. If it does exist, then we have to say, OK, this group exists already uh, inside of the region. Please provide another name. You can have groups with the same name if they're in different regions, but not if they're in the same region. OK, so if this is true, we're going to ask for another uh, name here. Else we're going to break, which will break out of our while loop and finish our function off there. Next, we're going to create the resource group. We're going to echo a message creating a resource group, and then we're going to print out the value of resource group in selected region, which are all variables that are being set by user input in previous functions. And then we're going to use the Azure CLI functionality. Again, this is another reminder that a bunch of different CLIs, in this case, the Azure CLI, play very, very well with Bash. So you can see we're using CL Azure CLI commands inside of our Bash script. We're saying az group create. We're going to create the resource group that is in our variable resource group. And we're going to put it in the region. So this dash l means location. We're going to put it inside of the region also that's inside of this variable. And then we're going to pipe the output to grep provisioning state. We have a video covering grep. In this case, it's just going to print out the line that has the provisioning state in it. Then we're just going to list out all our resource groups using the az group list. Dash O stands for output. You have different output types when you work with the Azure CLI, and we want to use the table one. And that's pretty much it. Let's do Control J. And we're going to go ahead and run this create resource group. The first thing it's going to go ahead and do is install the Azure CLI for me. In case you don't have it installed, no worries. It's going to go ahead and do that for us. Then it's going to give us a little message here that says to sign in, we have to use the browser and copy this code. So I'm going to open this up in the browser, copy the code here. We're going to hit next. It should show you an option to sign in, or if you're already signed in with your Azure account, select your account and then hit continue there. And now it says Microsoft Azure cross-platform command line interface. Uh, you have signed in here. So now we can go back to our code space. And you see it says, you logged in. Awesome. It's printed out five regions for us, East US, East US 2, and a bunch other here. I can put now East US 2. And enter a name for your resource group. I can do RG Gwen's resource group. And now it's saying creating resource group for you, RG. Let's scroll back up here. Uh, creating resource group, RG dash Gwen's RG inside of East US2. And it printed out the provisioning state, which is done by that grep command. And then finally, it printed out the name of all the resource groups that I have available in the region. And you can see that the RG dash resource group, the RG dash Gwen's RG exists. 
And that is the end of this uh, script and everything has worked for us. If I run this once more again, and if I ran into uh, values that didn't exist, it would just loop over and over and over again. What I'm gonna do actually is remove this top. We're not gonna call setup. We're gonna comment this out. So remember I mentioned in the comment video that the, or in the variables video, actually it's in the, what is a bash script video that if you were to comment, provide a, a little pound symbol at the beginning of a line, then that's gonna comment out. It's not gonna provide any action. This is not gonna be actionable. Uh, just because the CLI has already been uh, installed for us. So let's run this and you can see no setup happens because I've commented it out. And let's say I want to do East US3, which doesn't exist here. You can see it's just going to keep asking us. We can provide a message saying like, hey, this region doesn't exist or something like that. We'll do control C to stop the script. And that's the end of our bash script. Uh, I hope you learned something. And let's move into the last video of the series, our conclusion, and provide you with a bunch more resources so you can take your bash skills and cloud skills even further.